SPIE presents the Advancing the Laser series, honoring 50 years of laser achievements. Hello, I'm uh, officially called John Hall. Uh, most people know me as Jan, coming from Denver, Colorado in the middle of the 30s. I've had a gloriously lucky life, and I'm glad to be able to say a few things uh, for you, especially if you're a student and interested in trying to figure out how to use your 60 years for some fun. The work that I've been involved with for most of this time is trying to make the lasers more stable because whatever you want to use the laser for in measurement science, mostly it's about distance measuring or time or frequency measuring. And it is interesting to you know, think about what do we know? So we have things which we pick up as the standards and we suppose, okay, this has been thought about by people and so maybe this is a good standard. How did the International Bureau of Weights and Measures determine the official measurement of a meter? So then we sat around in uh, Paris and there's 50 nations represented. And how are you going to come to a decision about the redefinition of the meter? Everybody agrees that this bar of metal is not the right thing. It should be a laser thing, but which laser? As our German friends liked a green one and somebody liked a red one. I liked the infrared one. And on the other hand, all of the scientists would say that the speed of light is really a nice parameter because we believe it's really constant and we believe it's the same independent of what color. Not only believe it, but there's measurements that say to some precision. So this was quite a, uh, a nice time and the, many people put their love and energy into fixing the political discussion so that nobody was surprised and left out of the party. And it, in the end, the uh, Supervisory Committee for Weights and Measures uh, governs the International Bureau of Weights and Measures, agreed with a definition that the speed of light is uh, 299792458 meters per second, exactly. 18 digits statement about the speed of light being the same in every direction would be comforting to me because I helped con the world into using the speed of light as the standard for the length measurements. What is the optical frequency comb and how is it used? A frequency comb is an interesting concept because by the physics it can produce uh, frequencies that are equally spaced. Extremely precisely defined uh, so that the width can be one millionth of the spacing between them or uh, even a larger uh, ratio of spacing to width. So how would you use that? Well, one of the things that would be interesting is to do spectroscopy with it. And okay, there are a lot of crystals we could measure and we can see gases in the atmosphere and that's interesting. But the application, which I am really excited about, is that it forms the prospect for measuring gases that come from humans. So we breathe in, we could bring it, breathe in chemically pure nitrogen plus oxygen the way the astronauts do. And then we breathe out molecules that include carbon dioxide that wasn't present in the input. And we breathe out uh, if we're slated to have some problems a year from now, we can breathe out ammonia and uh, we can breathe out ethane if, we're, if the plan is for us to have cancer and it's already starting. And what is going on now is uh, an interface between this laser science community, me measurement science community, and medical people. How did you learn you had won the Nobel Prize in Physics? When Lindy and I got back from a nice vacation trip in 2005, uh, I had, we'd been away for three or four weeks, and I have a consulting business, so I was anxious to go see what kind of telephone calls had come in. So I went over there and instantly fell asleep. And uh, Lindy was sleeping, and then this phone call comes at 3.40 in the morning, and the people are clearly not native English speakers, and so she says, oh, tell me your business. And no, I can't tell you your business. And then, well, just put the telephone down. 
Okay, well, she thought it was a Guatemala phone scan, which was a problem at that time. And then uh, the next thing we had is that the phone was ringing again, so she picked it up and uh, could hear before the receivers even by your ear, don't hang up, this is important. And so then what they said, they want to find Dr. Hall. And so um, instead of saying, please call 911, she said, okay, well, here's, here's the phone number at the consulting place. So then that phone called, and uh, more or less by that time, the announcement had been made, and so the streaming banner on the TV is showing that something completely anomalous had happened. So that is really an a interruption in whatever plans you had for your life. And it brings me to a situation like this where people are actually interested in what I say. It's a really exciting time, and the only problem is that I may be a, we need a new guy has high energy like I used to have. <laughs> I'm so glad to have had the, you know, it's now 70 and some years of uh, being an active scientist. I can't imagine a better job.